It's never easy, right? If you've been watching the Code Walk series, you might know that I've previously talked about something called the robustness principle. I think I talked about it uh, at least in the Lisk of Substitution principle video. So the robustness principle is also known as Postel's law or Postel's principle. Uh, presumably, I guess, because uh, it's named after somebody who's called Postel. And uh, th this guy named Postel was uh, prominent in the creation of the protocol TCP. And the reason I'm saying it's not simple is because I came across this uh, blog post the other day that argued that the robustness principle or Postel's principle isn't a good idea. And actually, I mean, I started to think about it while reading this article, and actually I think it's a really good argument. Like, it actually makes a lot, a lot of sense. So first of all, l let's establish what Postel's principle is, or, or, or the robustness principle principle. So the robustness principle states that you should be liberal in what you accept, but conservative in what you send. So think about it in terms of a method. So if you have a function that takes some arguments, then you should be liberal when people send you incorrect arguments. I think metaphorically we can, we can think about it this way. There, there's this concept from, I guess from user interfaces called do what I mean, D-W-I-M. So do what I mean, don't do what I say. So I might be saying something that's not entirely what you were expecting, but still you, pro you might understand what I, was, what I was meaning. You might understand what I was probably intending to say, but didn't manage to say. So in user interfaces, that would, I guess that would be like, I mean, you're supposed to type yes with a capital Y, and then you type it without a capital Y. So then, okay, you just accept that anyway. Or, I mean, it could be a number of different things. I mean, forgiving interfaces, right? Like, let's say you accidentally refresh the page and, and the stuff that was written in the form is kept in the form. I mean, maybe that isn't entirely do what I mean, but, but in some sense, maybe it would be. It's like a forgiving user interface. It's like, you probably weren't intending to clear the user interface, so we assume that and we simply keep the information for you and refill the forms with the, with the information that you have put in. But now I'm trading off topic. So the point is, think about TCP. I mean, TCP is a protocol. So, so the point was that whenever somebody created an implementation of TCP, the guideline was that they should be, or, or the, the implementation should be liberal towards transmissions that are malformatted, packets that are malformatted. But again, like it's, it's probably simpler if we just think about it in terms of functions. So, I mean, if you're in a dynamic language, ah, maybe this is a good example. If you're in a dynamic language, the compiler or the lack of compiler. I mean, nobody's enforcing types. So you might be expecting a string, but somebody sends you an array. So one common thing that people do is that they treat everything as, as a list. So like if somebody sends you a string, you treat it as a list of a single string. If they send you a list of strings, you treat it as a list of strings. So that might be one way of thinking about it. Like the specification might say, uh, send a list of strings, but then you support uh, also accepting a string because you assume that it's, it might be a reasonable mistake or it might seem logical for people to send you a string, so sometimes users of your code might do that. Ah, and that's one end of the spectrum. So one end of the spectrum is that you should be liberal in what you accept, right? So forgive others for their mistakes is part one. Part two is be conservative in what you send. In other words, don't make mistakes of your own, right? Accept when others make mistakes, but be really sure that you are not making mistakes yourself when you are sending packages. And I mean, if you think about it, that sounds like a super smart idea, right? Like if everybody followed this principle, it seems like the world would be a much nicer place. And that's kind of the argument that I was making in the previous video, in the Lisk of Substitution principle video. But this blog post seems to argue the opposite. And it's actually, again, a very good argument. Here's the point. The point is that if we do this, if we encourage people when, for example, specifying TCP, and then people build different implementations of TCP, and they are all liberal in different ways, then it's very difficult to predict how they will be liberal or how that implementation will be liberal. So suddenly, implementations of TCP aren't actually corresponding to the specification of TCP. And it might be that over the long term, if some particular implementations become more popular than other implementations, it might be that we sort of collectively start to adapt to that particular kind of behavior, which makes it sort of informal specification. And if you think about it, that's exactly what happened to HTML. Like, HTML with uh, web development. Web browser were extremely forgiving. So 
if I'm not mistaken, I mean, if you think about XHTML, from the beginning, there were no such thing as non-closing tags. By the way, I might be extremely incorrect here. It might absolutely have existed in the specification from the beginning. Sorry if I'm wrong. But to the best of my knowledge, I guess we didn't have non-self-closing tags. Like the non-self-closing, the, 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 the tags that didn't have content such as uh, IMG or, or BR, I guess they were self-closing. Like they had a slash in the end to denote that this is a self-closing tag. But then people started omitting that slash and just say BR without the self-closing slash, uh, which made them an extremely strange token in the language of HTML. But since browsers started to forgive them for that because they understood, right? Do what I mean. They understood what we meant uh, rather than what we said, even though we said something else, they started to forgive us for those mistakes. But the problem is that we started to sort of adopt these, these conventions of uh, omitting this slash. So suddenly, tons of brow we have tons of browsers, and the browsers all had different specifications. Or, or I should say that the browsers started from the same specification, but they all had different interpretations. So it was very difficult to predict how any particular web page would behave in any particular browser. And this, I mean, that just seemed like a super good point to me, honestly, because how would that be, how could that possibly be what we would want? So the author of the blog post mentioned that with HTML5, these exceptions to the rules were actually specified in the specification so that the incorrect interpretations at least would be uniform across the different browsers. So Postal's principle or the robustness principle, perhaps not necessarily accurate. Uh, there are some super good arguments against it. If you want to read the blog post that I mentioned, check out the link in the description. Thank you super much for watching. Remember to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.